Yeah, that is a very uh, interesting story, and it definitely illustrates. If you if you ever build in a house, you don't want your nails to rust. Soak them in beta glucan first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, the beta glucan is it backed by any research? I had one one university professor tell me there was something like uh, eighty thousand uh, studies. Uh, I know we've got a computer nearby. If we go to PubMed or Medline, right quick, we can we can just type in glucan. I would think mm, probably more in the area of fifty to sixty thousand. If if uh, we can get a, a nearby count, you were uh, halfway there. It's actually about a hundred and thirty thousand. One hundred and thirty thousand. Now let's let's type in glucan and human in the same uh, same search bar and see what we come up with. All right, now we have about 40,000. 40,000. So let's say that 18,000 might be a little low. Because <laughs> <laughs> we know that some of these studies may have to do with, say, uh, uh, test kits for people that have candida. Well, candida's, you know, going to have uh, beta-glucan in its cell wall. And so when you actually test uh, the blood, for certain types of, of uh, infections, uh, glucan is a target. Now, this is another interesting thing. Uh, in, in our drug trials for the water-soluble version of this, we've got uh, tests that can measure down to the uh, picograms. That's a technical term for itsy-bitsy, teensy-weensy <laughs> little bit. Uh, we cannot detect our material in the blood which raises another multi-million dollar question, where is it? Well, it must be either inside those immune cells continuing to be broken down and released or bound to those CR3 receptors, possibly other receptors, or it's being disposed of. Just another little tidbit, you know, on the $20,000 pyramid, if you ever ask. 